Has all of Israel rejected the gospel? Has all of Israel been cut off? We're going to explore that thought today in the Word. Good morning, and welcome back to Today in the Word. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer. I'm glad you've joined us as we walk through the book of Romans. We're starting now in chapter 11. We're getting into the nitty-gritty, and I believe over the next few lessons, some eye-openers for you. Let's jump into verse 1, because it seems as if Paul is making such a case that Israel is being cut off, and he's grieving over his own brethren because he wished that they would be saved. He even made the statement over in chapter 10, verse 16, that they have not all obeyed the gospel. So he opens up chapter 11 with this question. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Now listen to what he just said, because it's a key to understanding who is the Israel of God. He says, has God cast away his people? That term, his people, is a very important term. Because as we go through this, we're going to see how God has engrafted the wild olive branch of the Gentiles and the branches of the Israelites that were cut off back into one root, one tree, which is Jesus Christ, to make the Israel of God His people. And Paul is setting that up. For he says, For I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. So he gives us his natural heritage. Now, he's already said all of those who are of Israel are not necessarily of Israel. And all of those who are the children of Abraham are not necessarily of the children of Abraham. Abraham. Yet he gives us his pedigree because he's showing you that he is one of those of the remnant of the election of grace. Verse 2, God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. That's the key of election. Though natural Israel, some were cut off. Those who were of the elect, which is the real Israel of God, that's why he said all who are of Israel are not necessarily of Israel. That's why Jesus said, if you were of me, you would have received me. If you really were of Abraham, you would have received me. And he said, you're not of the children of Abraham, but the children of the devil. What is God saying here, and what is Paul making a case for? He's saying, who is the true Israel of God are those whom God foreknew, so there would be those among the natural Israel who would be of the true Israel because they were of faith. Or do you not know what the Scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord They have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. Elijah thought he was one of the only, because he knew that so many of Israel had rejected God. But verse 4 says, But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, and Paul uses that same analogy, just like he had preserved a remnant of 7,000 who had not turned away from God, he says here in verse 5, even so then, all this pres- at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So he says, has God cast away all of his people? No. Talking about natural Israel. Because there's always been a remnant, just like there were 7,000 that God preserved for himself during the time of Elijah. There's that remnant that came even into the New Testament, that when Jesus came, they had made the commandments of God null and void through their traditions. And so many, the Pharisees 
and all the leaders and many of those of Israel had rejected the Messiah. He came as a stumbling block, Paul says. Instead of a stepping stone, he was a stepping stone for some, but a stumbling block and a rock of offense. And so those were the ones who'd rejected the Messiah. But not all were cut off because there is an election of grace. And then he says, and if by grace, then it's no longer works. This is not by anything of the natural. This is by the election of grace. But if it is by works, it's no longer grace. It's got to be one or the other. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. I hope you get that. Let me read that again. Israel has not obtained it. Talking about natural Israel. What it seeks, but the elect, that's the elect of grace, those like Paul, those who responded to the gospel. That's why when he says over there in the other chapter, not all have believed the gospel. That means some of them have. And he says, therefore, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it was written, and he quotes out of the Old Testament, God has given them a spirit of stupor out of Isaiah, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. During the time that Paul is writing that letter. Now we're going to understand later in this chapter when that day is over. But he's saying unto this very day. And then he quotes again David. He says, as David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so they do not see and bow down their backs always. It's speaking of Israel's rejection and yet not all Israel is cut off because there is an election of grace. Do you see that? The reason that's so important is because what Paul is teaching is how God always works and continues to work. Even among the Gentiles, he, Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father draw him. Not everyone will be saved. But by the election of grace, God is calling in His people, and they make up both the Jew and Gentile in the natural. You understand that? Where Paul wrote one time, you once were Gentiles, meaning you're no longer Gentiles. Why? Because we've been engrafted into the commonwealth of Israel, and the middle wall of division has been taken down. So there's neither Jew nor Gentile, but there's one new creation called the one new man. And that's what Paul is teaching. And you're going to understand that as we get further into chapter 11. This is so important of understanding the grace of God. Thank you for joining us today in the Word.